What's up guys, I'm Justin from Wild Rose DIY and Wild One Films and I'm going to take you on a tour of the tiny house today. So I started building this house after uh, a little tumultuous time in my life. I always wanted to do it and so I did it. I went for it. It took me probably, it took me years to, <laughs> to finish. It took me years but actual build time was probably about six or seven months or so. So trailer is 30 feet long by eight and a half feet wide. I got a custom built by Chutch Wagon Trailers in High River, Alberta, Canada. Shout out to Jason Chutch. He did an amazing job. It was exactly what I wanted, exactly what I was looking for. I did pretty much all the work myself. Like I said, hired out a company to build the flat deck trailer for me so I could get the length and the width that I wanted. And then I hired out a company to come and spray foam all the walls for me because uh, I just figured spray foam would probably be a lot better and I didn't want to do it myself. And then I had a couple friends along the way, my friend Mitchell Shane Julian, amazing photographer, check him out at Trailer Film. He helped me lay out all the end walls and he helped me put the door in. And then my stepfather, Melvin Stuber, he helped me sheath the entire outside of the trailer because I don't know how you do that with just one person. And then my best friend Tomo Chubachi helped me put in all the windows. Again, you need two people to do that. And then um, by the time I was coming around to doing the plumbing, I had learned how to do all these other things and I just wanted this thing done. I hired out a plumber, an awesome dude named Michael Arnold who did a fantastic job of the house. Let's uh, take you on a tour and we'll see what you think. Okay, as you can see, this is the secondary loft, which I kind of envisioned as a bit of a reading nook, kind of just a, or a spot where if I had company over, they could crash up here. If I had family from out of town, whatever. If anyone wanted to stay in a tiny house, see what it's like, they could uh, come up here. It's full of, I got all kinds of comic books and some collectibles, some little stuff up there, but uh, I think we're about six feet deep on this one. So that's the other loft. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys how the pulley system works. Two pulleys on the ceiling, and when you like, lift this up, you see that the ladder splits in half here, so just take her all the way up. Put that into place, and then just wrap it around the cleat. That baby ain't going nowhere. Okay, so this is the bathroom of the tiny house. As you can see, there's a bit of an ongoing motif in my life, but uh, hey, I'm Canadian. So what we got in here is I've tiled this whole thing in these wood looking tiles, which are, I think, really cool. And uh, I got the nice shower column in here. It's got the detachable wand. And then the two jets right here, which are pretty cool. Big fan of this shower. It's standard sized shower stall. It's got a standard sized basin on it. So nothing too fancy, but it works great for the tiny house. You gotta say, the first time I showered in this shower was the most satisfying shower I've ever had in my entire life. So then we got the rest of the bathroom. Just your standard Ikea sink. I got the nice thin one, so I got plenty of room here. Lots of storage underneath here. And then just the standard medicine cabinet. Nothing too crazy here, but uh, that's also from Ikea. We got the blinds here. Just have a look. Just while you're having a pee, just have a look. Or when you're brushing your teeth or whatever. So I was very lucky to come across somebody who was offering a spot in Calgary with all the hookups and everything for a tiny house. So the entire time I was building this thing, everybody's like, where are you gonna park it? Where are you gonna park it? And I was like, I don't know, I, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out when it comes to that. So when this house was just about done, this spot came available and a friend of mine sent it to me and I was like, holy, like I, this is too good to pass up. So I got in touch with this guy and he's the nicest dude ever. He got it all set up for me and then I ran all the electrical out. Luckily enough, I have a flush toilet, a real live, normal toilet in a tiny house, which I know is kind of on the rare side. So I really lucked out there and it just makes things so much easier. It's got the toilet and you gotta have the bidet on it. You know what I mean? So as anybody who watches tiny house videos or lives in a tiny house knows that space is paramount and you only have so much room. So to get into the bathroom here, I just built this sliding door. Built it, stained it, you know how it is. Um, instead of putting the barn door style slider on, which takes up 
ton of room like they're huge I actually this is just a closet door track so the door is a little heavy for it but I mean it works like and it was way cheaper way cheaper than those uh, barn door kits you can get just have this little apartment style fridge it's uh, I don't know, about five feet high or so and then I have this great propane stove we got and retrofitted to be gas because I have natural gas hookups here which is also another awesome thing um, then I just built this little rolling spice rack here just uh, I had a little bit of space so I thought why not just throw that in there as you can tell there's lots of spices on there so far but uh, hey that's okay then above that I just built so I built all the cabinets in here including these ones so this way and we got all kinds of spices and whatnot in there and then my uh, then the venting goes up through there and I've got some spices paperwork just boring stuff nothing too exciting and then we just got another cabinet I built that I built the countertop so I built that myself uh, countertop stained it I actually took a little torch and burned the countertops first and then stained them and uh, and I covered them in a butcher block mineral oil so then on the other side of the kitchen here, we have this uh, giant cabinet, which houses my on-demand water heater. That just runs off of natural gas. And then that's where the water comes in as well. Just have a little hookup outside that's uh, insulated and uh, has a heated hose. So my kitchen's a pretty good size. I've seen apartment kitchens that are actually smaller than this one. So I had a little bit of extra space. So it was either a dishwasher or a combo washer dryer. So. I went with the combo washer dryer for sure. So it just sits under here, nothing too crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. It, uh, you gotta do pretty small loads and they take a long time, but it beats the hell out of a laundromat. So on the other side of the kitchen, I got your standard sink. Just have a nice metal backsplash here, which I think is really nice. It's super simple, they're just those stick on tiles and uh, I think they look pretty good. I built these cabinets, I built the bottom cabinets countertop built it all I, uh, I had nothing but time so I uh, was laid off and uh, just built this thing on my line of credit and this is uh, what happened <laughs> so when I looked at buying a countertop for for this side of the kitchen I found a really nice one I liked from Ikea but it was over $300 and I was like I know I can build something cheaper than that because I had the time so I bought, I spent 60 bucks on materials and day or two building this and uh, I think it's really nice and it's totally custom and I can say I built it. Okay, so then this is the other half of the house. So as you can see, I've got my stairs going up here to the master loft and then I have my desk area here which uh, is awesome, it's, it's super versatile. I edit all my videos here, I eat dinner here, it's awesome, it does it all. Coming in from the front door. I built the floor up over the wheel wells and I did this for a couple reasons. First of all, it is gross. The wheel wells are, wheel wells suck, they just take up all kinds of space and you gotta build around them and they're a bit of an eyesore and so I just built the floor up over top of them. That way I've got hatches built into the floor here so I can just open them up and I got tons more storage right underneath here and I feel like it gives the house a little more dynamic feel because you're up, you're down. There's still plenty of headroom up here. I thought it was a great way to utilize otherwise useless space. So this is the desk. I've got a full video on how I built this desk on my Wild Rose DIY page, which you're probably already on. So go ahead, check that out if you're curious about how I built this desk. But uh, yeah, it's super versatile. And then I put in this um, monitor mount, just hooked up to my MacBook Pro so I can just move this wherever, however I want to have the desk set up. And then I can also move it so it's out into the kitchen. So if I'm doing dishes or cooking or whatever, I can uh, have, on, have something on to keep me entertained. So then right here I've got my bookcase where I just keep, right now it's full of, we've got some records, we've got some WrestleMania programs, we've got a bunch of leather working tools, we've got a bunch of camera gear, we've got a couple collectibles. It's a mess and uh, I haven't quite organized it the way I want yet, but I know where everything is so that's fine there. Up here is where I keep all my clothes. So I designed it this way so it's super accessible. So I can either get at my clothes from up in the loft or I can get them from down here. I just need 
some pants or whatever, just keep them right here because it's obviously it's not easy to get dressed in the loft. So you can just get out all of your clothes from here and it just works, it's super functional and uh, I really like it. Okay, and so here's the staircase area. So I built it so that the this big area here is where I keep all my jackets and whatnot. So I got plenty of space there. And then this was kind of twofold. So I also built up this, the top stair double wide. And I saw another YouTube video talking about it. I wish I could link to it. I don't remember what it was. But uh, by making this double wide, it just makes it so much easier to get up and down from the loft. You just have way more space coming down and going up. And uh, it's just giving me more space underneath for all my coats and jackets, so it's perfect. And then we got some other stuff here. So I plan on putting a shoe rack in here eventually, a nice pull out one, but uh, that just hasn't happened yet. And then I just had a bunch of random space to work with here. So in here I just got a fabric tote, I got motorcycle helmets, some extra towels, a travel bag. And underneath here is where I just keep all my shoes. Just toss them right under and they're out of the way. So up here is the master loft. So the way I designed this house was I built a foam core scale model of the shape of the house and I knew what I wanted to do for the living room area and this loft. So then I just built all the appliances and furniture out of the same material, built them to scale and I just moved them around until I figured out a layout that I liked and was gonna work for me and it worked out pretty much exactly the same. So originally I was gonna go with the gable style roof where it kind of points in the center and uh, when I was doing the design work, then I figured that wasn't quite gonna work for me because as you can see, at the back here, I have a bunch of shelf space that's not even being used and I built a little closet hanger for, for hoodies and dress shirts. And so I knew I wanted to have that along the back. So having a gable roof was not gonna work for me. So I went with the shed style. It just goes straight up on one end and it actually gives me a lot more room. So I have my bed going this way instead of this way and then that way I've got a lot of room to sit up in bed here without hitting my head and then I can watch my TV at the end which I just have a little Chromecast hooked up to and then it gives me lots of space over here to have clothes and then I have access to my other clothes on the other side here so it worked out pretty good also in here we got a skylight which is awesome gives you a little bit more headspace up in there and um, it's just kind of nice to have it open and stare up out at the stars and just drift off into dream town so I got two switches one is a dimmer for the lights up here so we can just turn those on and off and then the other one actually does the master light out here so I can just leave that light on so I can see what I'm doing when once I'm up into bed, I can turn it off and we're all good to go. It wasn't just clickbait. Let me show you the theater room. So this is the coolest part of the house. I am a huge movie guy and I've got a ton of them. I'm not giving up my DVDs. I don't care if everything in the world goes digital. I will always have a DVD or Blu-ray player. I will always have my movies. So when I was designing the tiny house, I knew I had to make sure I had room for my collection. So this is what I came up with. It's kind of based on, I was watching some kind of music tour video and I saw their tour bus and I saw the back lounge had kind of a U-shaped seating arrangement at the very back and then it had a little doorway to come through. So it was at that point a light bulb went off and I was like, if you just come through the door and then afterwards you can just do this. So we just pulled the projector screen down in front of the door, in front of the DVDs and we got a full theater room. Bet you never seen that in a tiny house before. This is by far the coolest part. 
Got it all wired up for surround sound in here. So underneath all of these seats, we have we have room for totes all the way around. So we got tons of storage in here. And then up in the rafters, as you can see, I left spots open so I could put all my video game systems or Blu-ray or cable box, whatever you want. You got lots of room up there. And then I put plugs as well at the backs of all of them. So you can just plug them all in, run them over to run the HDMI cable over to the receiver and Bob's your uncle. You gotta make sure you got lots of pictures of family and friends around because that's what really matters. So I hope you like the house. Um, this is was the hardest and most satisfying thing I've ever done in my entire life and I could not be more proud of how it turned out. There's a few little things here and there I'd probably change if I had to do it again but for the most part I love it to death and uh, I don't think you'll see another one like it until uh, maybe somebody else gets inspired by this because I think this is the coolest thing and I don't think you've seen it anywhere else. So if you're still with me all the way to the end, I want to thank you for checking out my tiny house and um, hope we see you on the next video on Wild Rose DIY.